Hello and welcome to another episode of Dr. Game Dev's tutorial. Unity AI part 3. Uh, in the last part we did something uh, in terms of implementing the finite state machine and now we're going to add the rest of the code here. So as we're seeing here um, well, let's uh, implement the enemy chase state so uh, one, it's going to chase during this loop where um, the current state is uh, chase okay if we had a placeholder for this so what do we need here in this case uh, we have to ensure that the sensitivity is a certain range so there are two possibilities low or high in this case so when we are in the chase state we want to go for the low one so we want to uh, check uh, the current sensitivity and then uh, see it should be next let's see what we want to do here so the idea is to go for the last known sighting the position Okay, so agent, this is the Namash agent, so we want to call uh, resume here. Now resume, as we'd seen in the last part, is uh, not the preferred method anymore. So let's change it to is stopped equal to false. Okay. And uh, we also want to change the destination. So the destination here is going to be the last known sighting. We need to now yield if the path is not complete. If the path is pending, then we'll yield. Okay, let's see what we want to add here next. Okay, uh, during chase, we need to keep checking if we've reached. So we're chasing, we will reach. The agent itself the player to check that we can check to see the remaining distance and compare it with um, the stopping distance that's another thing that uh, we have to take care of the stopping distance so if um, you're implementing something similar and um, the agent uh, is not working then do look at the stopping distance for the nav mesh agent. It should show up in the inspector. Increasing it might help. Now, what if we reached our destination but um, cannot see the player? It's another condition. Okay, so check VM. Check, I forgot. Okay, yeah, target inside. Then we change the current state patrolling. Okay, otherwise we are going to attack. And finally complete the code. Wait for the next frame. So yield ah, we can see it works. So let's now work on the final version of uh, the state. So this is the enemy attack. Again, we need a loop similar to what we did in the past. So this is going to keep looping while it's in that particular state. Keep in mind that uh, this code is an example. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of uh, how the finite state machine can be used. There are other ways of creating finite state machines. Uh, we can um, uh, use the design pattern for the same or we can um, also use the animator maybe I'll cover those in another set of videos right now the uh, idea is not to be exhaustive in terms of this uh, entire project um, just going to make sure that uh, the states are all filled in and they seem to work that's the entire goal of this exercise but um, you will be customizing your own project accordingly. So 
uh, you know obviously these conditions are only there for this particular case but uh, they won't be valid uh, in another project so when you're working on them uh, the, so if you're working on an adventure game the NPCs will behave differently uh, the states might be different if you're making something like the Pac-Man um, the states are going to be different again so it all depends upon what's happening in your code but the concept is the same that uh, finite state machines are going to work in this manner as we can see we have to cater for some other conditions as well so right now we don't have access to that so what will happen in the attack so we'll have to somehow figure out uh, something like a health system so if uh, something gets attacked uh, your health can go down you can die it's, uh, we will have a number and uh, we'll see how the state is going to get affected when an enemy is attacking us so essentially what's going to happen is uh, the when the npc gets close enough it's going to access the player's health which it will have access through its transform so we'll have a reference there so what it will do is it will gradually de deduct the value from the player's health so and um, uh, uh, use time dot delta time for it why because um, that will ensure that it will work on at the same pace on every machine okay so i'm continuing with the code as well so here is the health system we don't uh, have the implementation yet but um, i'm going to write it in a very small script later on okay so whatever the health will be we can just uh, sign it right over here so the player health is going to be changed here Okay, so this is the code for the change in player health when in case of the attack. So we just access that. Uh, so we're going the other way around. So we first got the health, and then through the health we got the player transfer. So this is another way of uh, doing the same. You can see we're getting this uh, red underline because um, right now we've not uh, finished it in the other script. But we'll do that in a moment. Okay, let's uh, keep uh, filling it in. Okay, so now we can um, actually figure it out, edit it. So we're decrementing the health and multiplying the time dot delta time. As you can see, I've added uh, four different destinations as well, and um, that, that they make things more interesting. You can also add different uh, NPCs once we're done with this one. Okay, so we have uh, the new script. Let's go and move it to the scripts folder, and then open it. Okay, we don't need this, so let's delete it. This is a very simple program. Just uh, it will have one value that we're going to change based on now uh, whatever happens in the game. So in your game, it could be a power up as well. So health can improve or it can decrease based on whatever has happening interaction between the player and some other NPCs I 
Okay, and um, so we assign it, but um, what if um, it goes to low? So yeah, if it's uh, zero or below, if even if that is even possible. So yeah, we can kill the player. Yeah, that makes sense. And it was showing up as red, so let's finish that part by adding the private number. So now let's uh, run the game and see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, it's uh, in the attack phase, and you might not notice, but uh, it's actually killing. Oh, see, he's oh, he's. Sorry now, what has he done?